Hello and welcome to The Heights. We're really glad you stopped by to see us. And if this is your first time stopping by, uh, a special welcome. If you want to know more about us or how to get in contact with us or what other things we're doing, like we have Thursdays, we have Devo's with me, then you can jump onto our app that you can get from any of the app stores. And that is Heights FC. F is in Frank, C is in Charles. And again, Heights FC, and you can jump on there and just kind of see what we're all about. Another great reason to get on the app is for giving. And here at the Heights, we really consider it a privilege to partner with our community and just give back a portion of what we have earned to go, go and see what God's doing here and, and use our money for that. So it's amazing when we all join together as a group how much farther our funds go and how much more of an impact we can have for our community. So for the rest of today, what is going to be going on is we're going to have some worship and some music here, and then we're going to have the last of our Wired series, and it is going to be on the Great Commission. Now, if you already stopped listening when I said the Great Commission, let me just tell you, it is going to be given by our only pastor, Jacob Powers, and you know, if you think you know everything there is to know about the Great Commission, I promise you that you do not. And I ask you just to stay tuned and see what he has to say. So I'm going to go ahead and pray for us and then we'll uh, throw it over to the worship team. Jesus, we're so grateful for this opportunity to um, be able to have this technology to reach out to um, others who are interested in hearing about what you have to say today. And I pray for the Holy Spirit to be with Jacob as he brings the message. And I pray for the hearer that they are um, open to what you have to say today and that you bless them mightily for their time listening. And we say all these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise treasures the faith never enough. You came along and put me back together. Now every desire is now satisfied here in your love. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, I'm not afraid to show you my. Failures and flaws, oh, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. The God of the mountain is the God of the valleys. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Better than you, there's nothing, nothing is better than you, oh, there's nothing better than you, oh, there's nothing better than you, oh, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Turn morning to dancing. You turn beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. 
Turn seas into highways You're the only one who can Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Nothing is better than you Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn graves into gardens. Turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can sing it out. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one. God that can make good out of a bad situation. Lord, you are the God that shows the brightest light in the darkest places. The roughest seas, Lord, are the ones that make the path to your glory. Father, we thank you. Hello, church. I hope you had a wonderful 4th of July last uh, celebration last weekend. Uh, but today, let's just jump right in. We are going to close out our series, Wired. And uh, my title today is The Great Commission. And the theological principle that we're going to be talking about is evangelism. Simply, like, what does it mean to share our faith? And sometimes that can lead to uncomfortable conversations. I had a few of those uncomfortable conversations this last weekend. I had the privilege to go camping with a few people who actually thought differently than me. We were talking about the leadership of our great state of Washington, and guess what? We differed, and in the process, uh, I might have got a little bit upset. I accused them. I said, you're living in an echo chamber, and you're probably saying, well, what's an echo chamber? And the echo chamber is defined as this. Our groups of people which are with a certain set of viewpoints and beliefs are shared among its members, but in such a way that the views from the outside the group are either paid no attention to or actively thought as misleading. And so I told them they were talking about what they believed it was different. I'm like, you're living in an echo chamber. And later my wife, the smart one that she is, said, hey, you need to go back and you need to apologize. That maybe when I thought about it, I have been living in an echo chamber. I've gotten to a point to believe that all the people that are around me, we all kind of believe in the same thing. And who could possibly think differently, differently than what I was thinking? I think that's the cool part about the country we live in is that we have the freedom to believe what we want. So when I think of that, when, when I frame that that way, I want you to think about your faith. So how do we navigate sharing our faith when we live in a culture that says, you do you and I will do me? You believe what you want to believe, but don't force me to believe the way you believe, especially this comes to the conflict when it comes to Christianity. Each generation has held a different view on how we shared our faith. I was doing some research, Barn is a research group, and last year they put out uh, uh, this survey called Reviving Evangelism. And uh, this study looked at faith sharing and the uh, expectations that Christians and non-Christians alike have towards sharing a faith. And among the major findings in this report is uh, they kind of revealed that Christian millennials feel especially conflicted about evangelism. And here's the thing. In fact, almost half believe, this is crazy, that it's wrong to share your faith. Now, hold on for a second. You're like, man, I can't believe they would do that. But I would have to turn our fingers inwards and say, I believe that that's our fault. That it's our fault. It is uncomfortable to share your faith. 
maybe it's because we have done it wrong for so very um, long period of time. Simply, the research showed that most not only don't understand how to share our faith, but are worried that they should not impose their faith on others. So I'm going to jump in. Here's my big idea. Go, one of our vision statements, go is a command, not a suggestion. Go is a command, not a suggestion. We are commanded to go and make disciples. And so really today, we're just going to focus on that go part. And that principal statement as Foursquare, we believe, is on the app under message notes. So let me, before we can jump into that, I have to remind you, before we can share our faith and, and talk about Jesus, we have to understand uh, the message that we're bringing to the table. And really the last three weeks have built up to this last message. That from the very beginning of time to today, that we live in a broken, fractured world. But God had a plan. He, he wanted to redeem mankind because sin has separated us from God. And so God in his love for us came to us as Jesus so that we could be reconnected with our creator, that Jesus represents true healing, both physically, emotionally, and spiritually. This is good news. Church, this is something worthy of sharing. So what, here's the question I'm gonna post. What is your view of the Great Commission? What is your view of the Great Commission? This is a secret we can't keep to ourselves. So the Great Commission is defined, we'll start there in Matthew 28. See, Matthew was a tax collector, I've talked about him before, and in his day he was this low life. Yet, an encounter with Jesus compelled him to leave everything behind and follow Jesus. So this statement that we're about to read is some of Jesus' last words, and it was from an eyewitness account of someone that spent time hanging out with Jesus. And this is what he said. This is the command. This is the commission that he gave to all those who were following him and all those that would continue to follow him long after he was gone. It said this, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Imagine Jesus' last words, this message that must go on. Jesus' work here on earth was just beginning. And as we look uh, through history at Jesus' followers through history, we see that they've helped shape the history that we now live in. That people's changed lives for Jesus are still impacting people today. So as much as we might feel that it's uncomfortable, it doesn't pertain to me to go, there's something in that act that unleashes something in our faith. Jesus' last words were go and share your story. Walk through life with people and grow in your faith. We'll see that it's not about having the right words or memorizing scriptures. It's about having the right heart. But before I want to jump in, you have to understand there's some hangups that come with sharing our faith and some of our way that we've looked at scripture and overlapped into the way we think we should share faith. Number two, what are your convictions about the need to spread the gospel? What are your convictions? What are your thoughts on this? Maybe your convictions of sharing your faith have been negative. Maybe some of the, you've seen a lot of damage that comes from people sharing uh, faith or talking about Jesus. And I believe some of this, uh, this challenge can come from passages that we misinterpret to the way we share to others. Let me give you an example. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 2. Jesus is talking to one of his leaders, Timothy, who he's instructing on how to lead his church. He says, 4. I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when it comes to set up his kingdom. Listen here. This is the part we can kind of uh, get understood. It says, preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage. Listen to this. You have to underline your people with good teaching. See, preaching is not just about repent. The kingdom of God is here. If you, preaching is not just, hey, do this or you're going to go to hell. I want you to understand what Paul was actually talking about is he was, he was talking to people who were in the church. He was saying that we need to continue to preach the gospel to one another. That we are preaching to each other the, the death and resurrection of Jesus. It's so easy for us to forget about the grace that we need in our own life. And so he's encouraging the church that this message of Jesus is not just for a moment in time. This is an ongoing message. Preach it to one another. Live out that message of Jesus each and every day. Be it sometimes we correlate 
preaching and that rebuking and that training to people who are very far from Jesus. Let me give you an example. I'm going to share in just a moment a clip of a widely distributed uh, uh, little message or thing on YouTube of a white preacher uh, kind of getting uh, harassed and beaten by a crowd at Chaz over in Seattle. And this, this video made its rounds. This preacher guy uh, made it, this is the crazy part, uh, had all this stuff going, he actually makes it onto stage, he's ho holding like his speaker, this boom box, and uh, he's, he's on the middle of the stage where they're trying to give these presentations, and, and he falls to the ground and the crowd goes around him. Let's just take a quick look. For Jesus Christ! Yes it is! Yes. Christ rules supreme! This is Christ's own! This is Christ's own! This is a Christian zone for Jesus Christ. This is a Christian zone for Jesus Christ. It's part of all. Thank you so much. If they do not receive your message, Satan cannot come to the so I'm not laughing at it, but I'm just saying this preacher was yelling and holding a sign. Sin is worse than death. And that is an absolutely true message. I agree with his message. I, uh, I disagree with the way he was treated. He was mistreated. Yet I would say in, in that time, he might have been in the wrong place at the wrong time to be sharing that message. Maybe that was not the right platform to be yelling about Jesus. I don't even know what a Christian zone is. I would love for someone to tell me what that means, uh, but it can be uh, frustrating. Think of the audience. People were there. They were angry. They were upset. They wanted change. Maybe they were a little misguided, but they wanted answers. That wasn't the time and place. And you'll notice in the video that there was this gal at the end that made this comment in Luke 9, 5. It was, it was spot on. He says, and if a town refuses, this is Jesus talking about sending out uh, the disciples. He says, if you a town refuses to welcome you, shake the dust from your feet as you leave and show that you have abandoned those people to their own fate. Jesus said to his disciples, sometimes they're not going to receive you. They're sending out to the message to preach and to heal. And sometimes it's not always received. It says, shake it off and move on. Experiences like this have given evangelism street preachers a bad rap. But even so, and this is where our convictions need to change, our heart needs to change, we are still commanded to go. We are commanded to preach the gospel to one another, to preach the gospel to those who are far from him. But we have to understand who we're talking to. Our convictions personally have to go from negative to positive. We have to believe uh, that there could be a change the way we present that. So let me recap. We are commanded to go and make disciples. The Great Commission. Jesus is not a secret best kept. Two, we are to preach the gospel to one another, to share with people who are far from Jesus, but we have to know who we're talking to. But most important, and I want you to grasp that as we do talk about Jesus, uh, there's a power that comes that God empowers us to share for the right place at the right time. Acts 1.8 says this, but you will receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This walk with faith is not an empty journey. It comes with power. It comes with strength. And, and too often, as we follow Jesus, we forget about this power that God has given us to tap into. We think we don't have the right words. We don't have enough scripture memorized. We don't even understand the story. But, but God says, man, if you'll just allow me to use you, I'm going to give you those words. I'm going to give you that strength. I'm going to give you that passion. But too often, we try to do it in our own power in our own will, in our own timing. If you walk away from anything right now, if you, if you remember this, I want, you to, I want you to grasp this, that no matter what you think about sharing the gospel or sharing your faith, do not be ashamed of it. Do not be ashamed of it. Sometimes we can be ashamed of those that have gone before us, but never be ashamed of the gospel. Paul said in Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jews first and also the Gentiles. Do not be ashamed. It is the power of God doing the work. It, it takes it out of your hands. You're not changing hearts. God's changing hearts. God's the one doing the work. It's available for everyone. 
Evangelism simply is creating environments, shame-free environments, shame-free culture. It's ways to live and share your story, connecting God's story with your story. Let me say that again. We're connecting God's story with your story. There'll be time for correction. There'll be a time to, to have this moment with Jesus that will allow him to shape our life. But when it comes to Jesus, we cannot be ashamed of the gospel. We can't shame people into their faith. It never works. We have to live unashamed. What did, what did that scripture say? It says, Jesus is what? Good news. The great commission, evangelism, is not sharing or uh, getting people to conform to religious practices. It's introducing them to Jesus who, by his power, meets them right where they're at. And it's love that he came to human form to be with us and to feel what we feel. Christians sharing about Jesus has not historically gone well. Not only has pushing our faith on others created hostile environments, but we've now, we, we start to live in an echo chamber of Christmas. That's uh, Christians, that's why I have to talk about this. After a while, we're only around people that believe the same way we're believing. And so we hear only the things that we want to hear. And if someone disagrees with us or we don't like something, we push away for that and we get to the comfortable things around it. See, God's saying, I want you to get out of the uncomfortable. I want you to understand the gospel, this good news. And doing that causes us to come out of our own bubble and engage people in ways we never, and when we do that, and you start to see new life experiences, new passions, new dreams. You get to walk with people. You get to, to see that God is still healing lives today. We live in a shame-driven culture. If we don't agree with me, if you don't agree with me, shame on you. You're wrong. Being unashamed means we are being confident in our faith. And it's knowing that other people will believe, act, and think differently than us. Sharing our faith in Jesus simply means being unashamed of the impact Jesus has on everyday life. I think part of this sharing our story and God's story is knowing that uh, uh, as a Christian, I, I don't have it all together. I'm actually in process. I tell people that I, I'm not there. I've not arrived. I don't think I'll ever arrive. I'm in process. Do you know your own story? Maybe you get to an opportunity. If you really want to get to know someone, you, you break bed, you share a meal together. If you really spend time listening, they're just going to get to a point where they say, hey, what is your story? And every time uh, they can't argue with Jesus in my story. They might disagree with God. They might not believe in God. They might not believe in Jesus. But I, I can't disagree or someone can't disagree because this is my story. And Jesus impacted my story in an amazing way. It set me in new directions, new paths, new journeys. That's my story. There is no time crunch. Just build authentic relationships. Can you imagine doing that? Can you imagine for a moment if that we got so excited about our faith that we're willing to walk and share it, that we're allowing God to take us out of our, our bubble, that we have still room to grow, that God still is doing something in our life, that he is still healing hurts in our own everyday life. And in the process that we get to introduce people to a Jesus that's not temporary, that's not a self-help book, but actually meets them right where they're at. That their eternity is at stake. That we live in a corrupt, broken world. That through Jesus, we have this new life. This is the expression of what it means to share our faith. Let me close with this last thought as we uh, go through these months. And I don't know uh, if you've Heard about baptisms, talks about it, seen in baptism, but baptism is this great example of actually showing our faith. See, baptism is a, a one, as you've said, yes to Jesus. One of the steps we take is saying yes to Jesus is we get baptized. Baptized simply is showing uh, the whole world this change that happened on the inside. We go all the way under the water to come out to represent that Jesus died and when he came out, there's new life. When we go under the water, we're, sh we're telling the whole world, this is what I believe. I'm declaring it to everyone publicly. Do you have to get baptized to be saved? No, but man, what a great way to share your faith. We always say, hey, if you got family and friends, people will show up to a baptism. Their chance to see faith in action. Baptism is a great way to say, man, uh, maybe you said yes to Jesus, but you're kind of like trudging through it. And God's saying, man, I know I want you to take the next step. I want you to, to, to be bold and, 
and I want you to be confident who you are. I believe that I was broken, and I want this new life. I want to be a better husband and wife. I want to be a better uh, mother or father. I want to be a better friend, boss. It starts when you say yes to Jesus, and you say, man, I want, I want to live differently than I have been living. It starts with that confession of faith in Jesus, and it goes to this outward expression of saying, Lord, man, I'm sold out for you. We're going to have a baptism coming up August 9th. A uh, great way we're doing redneck baptisms is going to be on our Sunday uh, service in the back of a truck with water. It's going to be awesome. But we get to celebrate people saying, hey, I'm willing to take that step. Are you willing to take that next step of faith? I'm going to pray for you right now. Uh, if you've never said yes to Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. And then I want you to, to, to pray and think about what it looks like. What are your next step? Is it getting into a group? Is it starting to read your Bible? Is it meeting with a mentor? Is it saying, hey, I want to know more. Those are next steps. God wants you to have next steps to just figure out your story. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for today that you've been weaving this story that we, we do live in a time where, God, we just carry around these marks, these scars of our hurt and our past. But God, as you heal those scars, uh, scars represent a healing that we are tougher because of it. And maybe you've known you've blown it. And today's the day that you want to say, this is the moment where I'm, I'm turning away from all that and I'm turning my heart to you, God. And if, you, if that's you today and you're listening, I want you to pray these words with me. Lord, I just trust you with my whole heart and life. I believe that you died on that cross, that you rose again, and that I'm forgiven for my past and I face a new life with you in it. God, I'm just excited that you know me and, and you love me, God, I, and, and that I can walk with you. I pray for some of us today that We've been hesitant about sharing our faith and maybe we've been hurt in the past or we've seen it done wrong, but there's people in our life right now and I pray they come to mind that need to know who Jesus is. And I pray you bring those people to our hearts and our minds. God, we start praying for them. We start having conversations. Maybe it's in you that you know it's time to take that next step. You're nervous, you're scared, you're not sure what it looks like, but man, there's a community of people waiting to walk through this life with you and I pray you see that and receive that and know it. God, I, I pray for everyone that's listening right now. That you love them, you know them, you see them, you understand their story, and you want to be part of it. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Jacob, thanks. That was a great message. I know that a lot of us sometimes feel intimidated to share our faith. And, you know, the Great Commission is like a big phrase. But really what it boils down to is just you telling your story about how Jesus has impacted your life. And what's great is Jacob reminded us that we have the power of Jesus when we're telling our story. So we don't have to be fancy. We don't have to worry about the outcome because really Jesus has got all that under control. Um, now for a couple of announcements. Don't don't run off yet. I have a couple of things that are very important. Um, number one, we are going to be having baptisms at the hub at the um, tailgate service on August 9th. Now, if you are interested in baptism, we need you to reach out to us so we can get you scheduled. And, you know, how are you going to reach out to us? Well, I talked about the app earlier, so you can reach out on the app. Um, you can also drive by Jacob's house and throw out um, a bottle thing with a note. Well, maybe not a bottle because that would probably break. But anyway, um, you could also grab someone who looks like they know what they're talking about. And by grab, I mean stand back six feet and let them know, you know, you're interested. And or you could respond to one of Jacob's emails would be another great way to let us know you're interested so we can get in contact with you and just go over some information. Um, second, I am very sad to be the one to tell you that Hunter's VBS is canceled this year. And we just can't make it work with all the restrictions. So um, we're going to trust God for those um, folks that we couldn't um, minister to. And so we hope that next year we'll be up and running with um, extra um, enthusiasm. And third, I'm excited to tell you that I heard a rumor. Actually, I was told by Jacob that we are going to be cutting concrete at the hub um, starting Monday. Now, I don't know what that means exactly, but it sounds very cool and very exciting. So for those of you who know what that means, awesome. If not, you might just drive by and gawk and then let me know what it means. But it sounds cool and it means some progress is being made. So we're really excited about that. Um, thanks for coming by. We'll see you next time. Have a great rest of the day.